Okay, hi there, welcome. Uh, it's Jeff Pack again with another in a series of chains of reasoning, essay plans, uh, walking through a question, a topic, and uh, trying to highlight some areas in which you can get great marks for analysis and strong marks for evaluation to boost and smash that grade. This time, uh, let's spend a few minutes together, if it's okay with you, looking at the question about exchange rates, depreciation of a currency, and the consequences for macro objectives. Between 2014 and 2018, the pound fell by more than 20% against the dollar. Some people argue this would benefit the UK's macro performance, but others claimed that low exchange rate will cause problems. Assess the view that the depreciation of the pound against other currencies is likely to improve the UK's macro performance. So the key here is to build chains of reasoning. Uh, here we go. Let's walk through my answer. <clears throat> a 20% depreciation against the euro and the, and the dollar is a significant fall uh, in the external value of a currency in a free-floating currency system. That's important. Identify the link between depreciation and floating exchange rates. In theory, this will lower the overseas prices of exports, such as cars and processed foods. A couple of little examples there. As a result, export volumes will increase. And other things remaining the same, Keteris Paribus, this will raise the value of exports, improve net trade, and lead to an outward shift in aggregate demand, because X minus M is part of the formula for aggregate demand. In this way, a, a currency depreciation helps to stimulate real GDP, reduce a negative output gap, take the economy closer to its PPF, and uh, lower cyclical unemployment. That's that, that little one sentence there, you've got real GDP, output gap, cyclical unemployment. Three concepts in one sentence. Building the analysis. And the impact will be amplified, uh, increased, if there's a positive export multiplier effect. Because if you're trading more exports, you're going to need uh, trade, you're going to need uh, logistics companies, you're going to need trade insurance, trade credit uh, companies. There's quite a few businesses whose revenues and profits are linked to the volume of trade, export multiplier. And then a little bit of application in 2018. The context of the question was the fall in the pound in 2018. The UK economy was fragile following the Brexit referendum. There was a fear, of course, of a recession in 2016. The competitive exchange rate helped to sustain demand, aggregate demand, at a time when base interest rates were close to their zero bound. So the Bank of England had little room left to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy. So therefore, a fall in the pound helped uh, increase aggregate demand. So there's my, uh, my paragraph. What I've done in red here, it's the same paragraph, just put together, is added in those connective phrases. In theory, as a result, ceteris parbus, in this way, the impact will be. These are little phrases you can use to uh, connect your chain of reasoning to make your paragraphs work well for you. Well, evaluate. In evaluation, the impact of a weaker exchange rate depends on the coefficients of elasticity of demand for both exports and imports. In the short run, if the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports are both low, then a currency depreciation might actually lead to a worsening of net trade. And that's if you've revised the J-curve effect, you might be able to visualise that in the diagram. So, for example, if you have a low PD of exports of 0.3, a low PD for imports of 0.4, that adds up to 0.7, meaning that the Marshall learning condition is not satisfied. The UK has a high propensity to import. 45% of our imports come from the EU, about 15% from the United States. So 60% of trade is with those two countries, those two currencies. And the risks are that, uh, in the short term at least, a currency depreciation with the J-curve might actually widen the trade deficit, not improve it. Building analysis, of course, you want to show the possible effect on demand. If there's a rise in exports, AD will shift to AD2. And I mentioned the, the multiplier effect. So you could also shift it out to AD3 if you wanted to with an export multiplier. And my diagram here, that takes the economy into positive output gap territory, uh, which could cause a rise in inflation. That could be part of your evaluation. An export boom could cause inflation. Um... But of course, it could also cause an increase in import prices because a, a fall in the exchange rate increases the cost of the things we have to import. So I've drawn an inward shift of aggregate supply there. There's my diagram. Second K 
KA point, second uh, analysis, knowledge, application paragraph. A second benefit of a lower exchange rate is that it might stimulate domestic and inward investment, which can then raise long and aggregate supply and trend growth. Depreciation of the currency makes output produced within the UK economy relatively cheaper to that in other countries. And uh, for exporters, if the pound falls, then actually the profitability of exporting goes up. If you're an exporter, if you're selling cars or if you're selling whiskey or selling whatever it is overseas, what you might do is you might keep your prices more or less the same and simply take the higher profit uh, from each unit sold. So output in the UK becomes relatively cheaper and the profitability of exporting goes up. And as a result, if you're making more money, more profits, that can fund investment. Businesses can fund investment internally rather than having to borrow money. A rise in investments can shift out the long and aggregate supply because productive capacity has gone up. And, and this is crucial, if the exchange rate is expected to remain at a low competitive level, then the UK might become attractive to in inflows of inward FDI, foreign direct investment, in sectors, I don't know, vehicle manufacturing, renewable energy supplies, whatever it is. So overseas companies might decide to choose the UK as a base for their manufacturing and export because of a competitive exchange rate. Uh, and if that attracts the FDI, if we get the FDI coming in, <clears throat> probably that's going to lift our capital stock, might help to improve relative productivity, which lags behind the states, and perhaps ultimately lead to faster trend growth. So the essence of this paragraph is that a weaker currency could, in theory, lead to higher investment and stronger growth. And in, if you wanted to take this analysis diagram to the next level, you're trying to shift the aggregate supply curve out to LRS2, LRS2 and aggregate demand shifts out to AD4 with a bit of inward investment coming in. So it looks, looks a bit of like a quite a complex diagram, but it's basically some shifts of demand and some shifts of supply there. To evaluate a counter-argument, so this is a nice evaluation phrase to use, a counter-argument is as follows. That a weaker exchange rate increases import prices, such as the cost of the things we have to import, the raw materials, the component parts, even things like the hardware, the technology becomes more expensive to import. This will increase costs and therefore threaten to lower the profitability of production in the UK. And if there's a bit of cost push inflation from a weak currency, that risks causing a wage price response, which might then lead to higher unit labour costs and a fall in our competitiveness. And the other risk of a weak pound is that uh, the yield on UK government debt might go up if overseas investors decide that the, the currency weakness uh, requires a risk premium for compensation and new issues of bonds. Go back to September 2022, the fallout, the fury from the, the mini budget, were, you know, back in September, the pound fell below one pound, bought $1.05. And the yield on government bonds was going up because overseas investors were demanding the yield goes up to compensate them for the risk. So if bond yields go up, that makes it more expensive for the government to borrow, for example, to fund infrastructure. So that's my valuation. Now, in some, in some um, exam boards, LXR, for example, is my board, you're looking for a final reason, judgment or a conclusion. I prefer my conclusions not to repeat points already made. I try and avoid repetition. Uh, you try and say something a little bit fresh. or just try and take a step back in the final lines of your essay. So here's my attempt. And there's more than one way of doing this, but here's my attempt at writing this. The impact of a currency depreciation depends in part on the context in which it happens. I like that phrase. Consider, for example, the weakness of sterling in the autumn of 2022. A fall in sterling might help to make... What is a predicted recession more shallow, less deep, uh, because it gives export industries a competitive advantage. But many UK export firms are saying that post-Brexit non-tariff barriers, NTBs, are hitting business. And therefore, some are even thinking of setting up manufacturing and distribution hubs outside the UK within the EU, within the EU to compensate. And with inflation expected to peak close to 11% in 2023, a depreciation of the currency in the short term, well, it's going to add to the cost of living crisis. Prices of food in the shops, prices of your petrol, your energy bills will be higher because of the weak pound, causing real incomes to fall and therefore deepening the downturn. OK, right, let's bring me back again. <laughs> Thank you for going all the way through this. If there's any more topics you'd like me to walk through a question on, please let me know. 
I'll do my best to write an answer and record it on the YouTube channel. Uh, please like and subscribe if you thought this was useful. And uh, thank you for joining me. Stay happy. Stay positive. Stay safe. See you soon.